Hello everyone, my name is Raphael and welcome to Network Engineer Pro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about switching concepts and more specifically MAC address learning and aging, frame flooding, frame forwarding, and we'll even take a look at the MAC address table on a Cisco switch using some helpful show commands that you should know as a network engineer or if you're studying for certifications like the CCNA. But really quick, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on my latest videos and other content that I'm working on. All right, so now that you went ahead and did that, let's get right into it. All right, so we know that layer two ethernet switches operate at layer two or the data link layer of the OSI model. They make forwarding decisions based on the destination MAC address found in the ethernet frame when it arrives on a switch. Let's take a look. Okay, so we have a simple topology here with one switch and three PCs, and let's assume that they're in the same subnet. Each PC has a MAC address associated with it, so PC1 has MAC address AAA, PC2 has BBB, and PC3 has CCC. And for the purpose of this video, let's also assume that the R process has already happened. Now, the main process of forwarding or switching Ethernet frames comes down to the switch learning or figuring out what MAC address is connected to what port. This switch right here, it just listens to Ethernet frames that come in 24 seven. When a frame comes in, it will record the source MAC address found in that Ethernet frame and store it inside something called a MAC address table or a CAM table. CAM table stands for content addressable memory and MAC address table and CAM table, those two terms are used interchangeably. So we're just gonna say MAC address table for the rest of this video. So PC1 wants to send data over to PC3. PC1 will build an Ethernet frame, and inside that Ethernet frame, it will have a source MAC and a destination MAC. The source MAC is going to be the MAC address of PC1, which is going to be all A's. The destination MAC address is going to be the MAC address of PC3, which in this case is CCC. PC1 finishes building this frame. It sends it on the wire towards switch 1. Switch 1 receives that frame on Ethernet E01, and it says, hey, I received a frame. Let me look at that Ethernet frame in a little bit more detail. Okay, perfect. I look at that frame, and I see that the source MAC address is AAA. It arrived on Ethernet E01, and it's a part of VLAN 10. Let's say, for example, we configure this entire switch, every single port, with VLAN 10. So the port belongs to VLAN 10. Let me enter this information into my MAC address table, and this is learning. So. Our MAC address table is going to have our first entry and it's going to look like this. It's going to say VLAN 10. The MAC address is going to be the MAC address of PC1. The type is going to be dynamic and the port that it was on is Ethernet E0 slash 1. That's our first entry, but the switch isn't done. It needs to also look at the destination MAC address. The destination MAC address in this case is going to be PC3's MAC of CCC. So the switch will again consult its MAC address table and say, hey, do I know where MAC address CCC is connected on? At this point, it doesn't because we only have one entry. So what does the switch do? How does it, how does it learn where PC3 is connected? And it does this by doing a process called flooding. So what happens is, is that this first frame arrived on switch one. Switch one did not have the destination MAC address in its MAC address table. So what it does is it floods that same frame out of every single port except the one it arrived on. So it's not going to get flooded back out of this port. It will do this on every port on that VLAN. So if the, if the original frame arrived on VLAN 10 and the destination MAC address is not in the MAC address table, the switch will flood that frame out of every port in that broadcast domain. So every port that has VLAN 10 configured. This type of flooding is also called unknown unicast flooding. Unicast meaning one-to-one -one communication. The switch does this by hoping that by sending the frame out of every single port except the one it arrived on, there is a really good chance that PC3 will actually get it and reply. So, like I said, the switch floods it out every single port except the one it arrived on. So, PC2 gets it, but it's not destined for PC2, so it just gets dropped. PC3 gets it, and it does belong to him because when it arrived, it looks the frame looks like this. PC3 looks at the destination MAC address and it says, okay, hey, that MAC is mine. So, this frame does belong to me. So now PC3 needs to reply. So it builds its own Ethernet frame and its Ethernet frame looks like this. The source MAC is gonna be PC3's MAC, so CCC. The destination MAC is gonna be the MAC of PC1. So you can tell that the source and destination MAC, they get flipped on the return. All right, so PC3 builds this Ethernet frame and it sends it on the wire in this direction. Switch one gets it, but what does the switch do? Remember, switches sit there all day and listen to incoming frames and learn MAC addresses. The switch will again look at this source MAC address and say, okay, 
this MAC address, I, I don't have it currently in my MAC address table. So it arrived on interface E03, which is configured for VLAN 10. The source MAC is going to be CCC. It is a dynamically learned MAC address and it arrived on Ethernet E03. Slash three. So now we have two entries in our MAC address table. So you can see how we're dynamically learning these MAC addresses. Every time a frame comes in and the source MAC address is not already there, it gets added. Let me clean this up a little bit. Now, when PC1 wants to communicate with PC3 or vice versa, when the frames arrive on the switch, the switch knows exactly where they're connected and it sends it directly to those ports. We don't need to flood anymore. That's nice, right? Just unicast one-to-one -one communication. And that's forwarding. Once the MAC addresses are learned, the switch consults the MAC address table to see if it knows where that destination MAC address is. If it does, it sends it directly off of those ports. Nice, right? Now, a key thing to remember is that these MAC addresses are dynamic. You as a network engineer, you technically didn't need to configure anything on the switch for it to start learning MACs. It did this dynamically by itself. These MAC addresses in the MAC address table will by default age out after five minutes. But like most things in networking, that can be changed. Once they age out, the learning process or flooding process that we just talked about needs to happen again. So eventually all the PCs connected to the switch, like PC2, they will eventually send data onto the switch. And like the others, once switch one receives it, it will learn where PC2 is connected. So it will dynamically learn that PC2 is connected on ethernet E0 slash two. And everyone can communicate, no problem. All right, so for this example, PC1 wants to communicate with PC3. We know for a fact that PC1 is gonna build an Ethernet frame with a source and destination MAC address. We know that the source MAC is gonna be 680Bravo. The destination MAC address is gonna be 6807. What I wanna ask you is, what happens when this frame here arrives on switch one but the source MAC address and the destination MAC address are both unknown. So the MAC address table is essentially blank, just like that. And if you need to pause the video to answer the question, uh, go right ahead. Well, since the source and destination MAC address are both unknown, what the switch is going to do is it's going to add the source MAC address and the ingress incoming interface to its MAC address table. That's the first step. So VLAN 1, MAC address 680, Bravo, type dynamic, learned on port Ethernet E, zero slash one. That's step one. We still need to figure out what the destination MAC address is. So since it's unknown to the switch at this point in time, it, the switch is going to flood it out of every single interface on that VLAN except the one it arrived on. So it's going to be flooded out of Ethernet zero two. It's not for him. It gets dropped. It's going to be flooded out of Ethernet three. This MAC address is connected to Ethernet E03. So he replies and eventually we learn the location of PC three on Ethernet E03. 0 slash 3. All right, so question two, what happens when the source MAC address is unknown, but the destination MAC address is known? So the MAC address table currently looks like this. And again, PC1 wants to communicate with PC3. What is switch one's behavior when it receives this ethernet frame? Well, since the source is unknown, the switch is going to add the source MAC address and the interface it arrived on along with the VLAN and the type. So 680 Bravo type dynamic learned on ethernet E0 slash one. This entry gets added to the MAC address table. And since the destination MAC address is already known, the only thing that needs to happen is the switch is going to flood the frame out of the port that PC3 is connected to. Okay, so now question three, what happens when the source MAC address is known, but the destination MAC address is unknown? So the MAC address table essentially looks like this. Well, switch one already knows where PC1 is connected, so it's not going to learn PC1 again. What it's going to do is since it doesn't know the destination MAC address is it's going to flood it out of every single port that belongs to that VLAN, except the one it arrived on. So the message goes out like this. It's not destined for PC2, so it gets dropped. PC3 gets it. It is for PC3. PC3 replies, and eventually we learn PC3's MAC address. All right, so our final question, question number four, what is the switch's behavior when it receives the Ethernet frame that we drew below? And the source MAC address and the destination MAC address are both known. 
So essentially the switch's MAC address table has these two entries here, and PC1 wants to communicate with PC3. Well, since the source MAC address and the destination MAC address are both known, we don't need to learn anything. We also don't need to flood anything. We simply need to forward out of the correct interface. All right, great job. I know you guys got all those questions right. All right, so for the hands-on portion of this video, we have a pretty simple topology. We have one switch with three PCs connected. All three PCs are in the same subnet, and we have our MAC addresses listed here in the diagram. So this switch just booted up. Its MAC address table should be empty. Great, it is empty. None of the PCs have sent any data yet, so there's been no learning and no flooding. Let's go ahead and generate some traffic from PC1 towards PC3. Great, we have a response, so we know that there's reachability, there's no configuration issues between PC1 and PC3. So if I hit up arrow for show MAC address table again, how many entries should I have in the table? Should I have one, two, or three? I should only have two, right? The source MAC address that the switch learned from PC1 and the destination MAC address that it learned from PC3 during the flooding process. Perfect, that's exactly what we see. We see that PC1 ending in 680B was learned on Ethernet E01. Thanks to the flooding process, we learned about PC3, which MAC ends in 6807 connected to Ethernet 03. Let's do a ping towards PC2. All right, great, we have reachability. Let's check the MAC address table now. How many MAC addresses should we see? We should see three, right? We, we also learned about PC2 connected on Ethernet E0 slash two. Now I wanna show you show MAC address table, let's hit question mark, and we have some options. You can look at the MAC address table for a specific MAC address. You can check the aging time, which is really important. We're gonna talk about that in a second. You can look at the count, how many MAC addresses total. So let's do show MAC address count. So it's telling you that for VLAN one, which these ports are configured on, we have learned three dynamic MAC addresses. This switch is capable of learning 221 million MAC addresses. Will we ever learn that many MAC addresses? Probably not. So if we do show MAC address table and let's type address. So if you're trying to troubleshoot something or figure out where device is connected to, hopefully you already have the MAC address available so you can just enter it. So let's just go ahead and copy this MAC address here. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And we only see the MAC address table for this specific MAC address. Now, why is this helpful? This is helpful because you can be on these giant modular switches that have hundreds of MAC addresses. You don't want to have to hit spacebar to try and find what you're looking for. So if you could enter the exact MAC address that you're looking for, that's going to save you a lot of time and it's really good. All right, so let's see what other options we have. We have show MAC address table, hit question mark. We have dynamic. Our MAC addresses that we're using today are dynamic, so you could do show MAC address table dynamic. You can see these static MAC addresses. We don't have any configured, so we're not gonna have any. And if you have a bunch of VLANs on the switch, you can see the MAC address table just for a specific VLAN. So for VLAN one, great. This is gonna be helpful if you, in case you have a lot of VLANs, you only care about VLAN 22, do show MAC address table VLAN 22, and you're only gonna see what you want to see. So let's go ahead and clear the MAC address table. So clear MAC address table dynamic. Remember, we're using dynamically learned MAC addresses. So let's do show MAC address table again, and we have nothing. Let's go ahead and ping PC2. All right, perfect. We have our two entries that we would expect. Something I want to show you is let's see how we can configure a static MAC address. So let's go to config T and we're going to do MAC address table static. And we're going to do the MAC address of PC3, which is right here. Let's just copy and paste this. VLAN one interface, the interface that it's connected to. So ethernet zero slash three. All right, so let's look at the MAC address table again. So show MAC address table. You see here under type, we now have a static MAC address. This MAC address entry will never go away unless you do a no on the static MAC address command that you just did. So as long as you leave this entry in the configuration, this MAC address will never go away. So remember how we talked about MAC address table aging that after five minutes by default, these dynamic entries will be 
removed and the learning and flooding process had to happen again. Well, when you configure a static MAC address, it never gets removed. So it never needs to, to be learned or never needs to, you never need to do flooding for this MAC address because you entered it statically. It's good if you could limit flooding, but again, it's a static entry. You have to add this manually yourself. And you can have reachability issues if this device is connected to another port other than Ethernet E03. Let's go ahead and clear the MAC address table once more. So clear MAC address table dynamic. Show MAC address table. We only have our static. It's never going to go away. One other thing I want to show you is show MAC address table aging time. Question mark. Let's see if that takes it. All right, perfect. So by default, the aging time for MAC addresses on a Cisco iOS is 300 seconds. That's five minutes. Let's go ahead and change that. So before we do that, let's add a couple more entries in our MAC address tables. Let's ping PC2. Great. Now we have our three entries. Let's go ahead and change the aging time to 10 seconds so we can see how fast this ages out. So let's go to config T and we're going to do MAC address table aging time. Let's say question mark. And you, if you enter zero, that's going to disable aging. So the MAC addresses will never age out. Let's change ours to 10 seconds, which is actually the minimum that we can do here. Look at that. We already, we already remove them. That was so fast. All right, let's generate some more traffic. Great. We have three entries. Let's wait a couple seconds and do this again. There we go. They're gone. The dynamic entries were gone after 10 seconds. The only entries that there is the static entry. All right. And that's it for now for Mac addresses. All right, we covered quite a bit. We talked about how switches learn MAC addresses and build MAC address or CAM tables, how they forward frames based on the contents of that table. Also, what a switch does if the destination MAC address is unknown, how MAC addresses age, and we even hopped on the CLI of a Cisco switch and examined the MAC address table and saw some helpful things that we could do if we wanted. I really hope that everybody enjoyed this video and learned something. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media, and my website, networkengineerpro.com. I put all the links down in the description description for you. All right. Thanks again, everyone. That's all for now. I will see you in the next video.